Very few believers are truly making progress in life and destiny. Many are merely existing. They are just victims of time. As time passes, you pass with it. And whatever time delivers by default, you receive it as your lot. This has been the lot of many, many people, sadly, including believers. That in as much as there is an inherent desire in every man, including you and I, to make progress and to advance in life, the reality is that very few people are making progress in life and destiny. And there is a reason for this. There is a reason why believers do not make consistent progress in their lives. There are so many reasons, but I decided to point out a few. And every one of these reasons I will be placing before you tonight as a charge. Let it become a prayer point for you. Because I am hoping that we will pray. In your miracle tonight, listen, in these explanations tonight are the miracles of almost everyone here who truly desires a miracle. That if you find your life stunted at any point in your life, it may be one or more or even all of these reasons. My assignment is to guide you tonight so that we have a basis for understanding, then to pray, then we enjoy the ministry of the Holy Spirit. Are you learning already? It is my desire to make progress with my life. I... I'm honored and we thank God because we've been able to set a lot of goals as a ministry this year. And God has been merciful to us. He's granted us the grace to achieve these things. And I cannot tell you the joy and the excitement in my life as we see this ministry make progress. It is true for every family. It is true for every business. It is true for every destiny. But I'm saying that there is a reason why so many, including believers... Unfortunately, including many people who are seated here listening to me and for the many who are falling online as to why you are not making consistent progress and advancement in your life. And as I read through this list, I want you to please pay attention in the name of Jesus and where it concerns you, note it by faith so that when it is time to pray, you will pray with understanding and trust that God himself will do a quick walk in you tonight. You believe that? Shout a loud amen. amen. Reason number one. Why people do not make consistent progress in their lives. I wrote here lack of goals and defined expectations. The first reason that I pointed here as to why many people including believers do not make constructive progress with their lives is because of the lack of goals and defined expectations proverbs 23 and verse 18 lack of goals and defined expectations the bible says for surely there is an end and thine expectation if at all you have any it shall not be cut off but if you do not have an expectation then there is nothing for god to fulfill in your life many believers do not have goals and do not have defined expectations. Now, please look at me. Life is like a marketplace or a shopping mall. Only one who desires to waste his time will enter into a large shopping mall or a very big open market as we do in Africa and keep roaming around hoping that as he or she is roaming around, they will later on think of what to buy. Usually, especially for women, what they do is they settle down and make a list at home. Am I right? A list of what to buy. Now, it can be adjusted when you get to the mall. But nobody leaves his home expecting to be efficient and then gets to a mall and keeps staring at things, staring at whatever it is. You will be distracted. You will waste your time. You will not even make the most efficient use of the resources you have, especially when it is limited. Are we together? Yes. So most people do not know that destiny and life is like a marketplace. They have no list of defined expectations. They wake up in the morning, they sleep late in the night. If they are fortunate to encounter a visionary person that day, he can give them some sense of direction with their lives. If otherwise, they continue in confusion and inefficiency. Reason number one, why many people including believers including church people do not make constructive progress in their lives is because they lack goals 
and they lack defined expectations. You must have clear and defined expectations. What was your plan and agreement with God for 2024? All right, let's assume that you did not plan. Now you are in September. Do you know from October, November, December, in three months, you can do much with God, greater than someone has done in five years. Sometimes we ask people to write prayer requests like this, not just because of it, it's a ritual. It is to help you fulfill this. That in sitting down to write a prayer request, it demands that you think. The Bible says, watch and pray. Watch and pray. That means there is intelligence to prayer. Hallelujah. Lack of goals. There are families with no goals. There are individuals with no goals. There are businesses with no goals. They just exist and they tell you, we just want to make money. Anytime you do not have a goal and a defined expectation, anything that comes to you would be your lot in life. Are we together now? As a ministry, we have goals, impact goals. We have the things that we are trusting God for. There is a, an assignment that stretches the lifetime of this ministry. But it is broken into yearly goals, broken into seasonal goals, broken into all kinds of goals. But many, many people do not have defined expectations. Perhaps you came here because you were invited by some good fellow. You were invited by a believer somewhere and you have come and honestly between you and god and in the name of honesty you don't even know what you expect god to do do you know there are times that people come for prayer and when i'm about to pray for them i tell them okay what do i pray for you for they say honest anything and i'm saying my god can you imagine anything you know how many things there are to pray for you over most people do not have expectations blind Bartimeo cried and when he got the attention of Jesus, you thought Jesus would immediately lay his hands on his eyes. He came to blind Bartimaeus and said, what should I do for you? And the man went straight. It means he had rehearsed it a number of times. If I ever meet Jesus, I will meet him twice to be healed. Immediately, he had premeditated on that expectation that I may receive my sight. It's as simple as that. There are people who are here tonight and they are going to be walking away healed because they meditated on this miracle service since yesterday. My problem is kidney issue. My problem is that I have cancer and I am dying. This is my singular. They come with a heart of focus. Their worship is directed there. Their amen is directed there. There's no wasting time. For someone I'm here trusting God for scholarship, for my education. I'm the only one God is lifting. And so they are attentive to their word. Expectation creates focus. You know when your word comes. Hallelujah. It is the reason why many people come to church and honestly, they return back just nodding and you ask them, so what did you receive? They say, ah, God moved though. Okay. Moved upon who? They say, I, just, I really enjoyed myself. This is a good church. I will come again. What did you get? What was your expectation? The Bible says, Hebrews chapter 11 and verse 6, for without faith, are we still here? It is impossible to please him. For he, anyone that cometh to God, you must believe that number one, he exists. And then number two, he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. Acts chapter 3, Acts get beautiful. Peter and John, he told them, look on us. Told the man at get beautiful, look on us. And the Bible says in verse 5 or 4, that the man fastened his eyes on them, expecting to receive something. Expecting to receive something. Expecting to receive something. Do you expect to receive tonight? Do you expect to be healed tonight? Do you expect to receive an impartation? Maybe a man of God, you came here tonight struggling. Ministry is clearly not working. And you just said, well, let me visit uh, this koinonia thing. I'm, I'm, no, don't waste your time like that. You come with hunger. There are possibilities in the kingdom. Now I'm within an atmosphere that makes that my reality. Father, my heart is opened. The woman with the issue of blood said to herself, there is what you must tell yourself and there is what you will tell God. Did you hear what I said? There is what in receiving, there is what you must tell yourself and there is what you tell God. 
she said to herself if i may but touch the helm of his garment i will be made whole and as soon as jesus was passing while others were robbing him maybe others were trying to reach to his pocket to remove money the woman slipped her hand with expectation the difference between her touch and every other kind of touch was one was a touch of expectation and jesus said who touched me the disciples said no 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 don't don't be silly there are so many people touching you said no the, a woman had touched me because i perceive that virtue had gone out of me expectations so if you are here whilst you are listening to me right now whether you are in any of the overflows outside zaria connecting across the globe make sure that you have a defined expectation don't just join the crowd and say we came for a great program no have an expectation father this is what i'm trusting i'm not working my husband is not working our children are not going to school lord visit us we need ebenezer to visit us tonight this shame and reproach let it be rolled away from my life hallelujah someone say in jesus name one more time shout it say in jesus name i come before the lord with an expectation yes sir number two the second reason why people do not make progress in life and destiny is because of wrong limiting belief systems wrong limiting belief systems i have taught extensively in this house that what you believe determines the reality that you walk in it is true wrong or limiting belief systems we have coined those belief systems with all kinds of sayings all kinds of sayings may be sociologically acceptable but they are scripturally wrong hallelujah for instance when someone fails the first thing he can say is who have i troubled that all this trouble is coming upon me it may not always be trouble i've told you that demonic interferences are not the only limitations to the lives of people let me tell you the truth if satan is bound today physically kept in a location and every demon is bound kept in a location many will still fail that is when they will know that satan is not entirely responsible for you have a will and your will can determine whether you succeed or fail in genesis 11 the holy spirit was not mentioned satan was not mentioned angels were not mentioned demons were not mentioned yet there was success and there was failure hallelujah in genesis chapter 1 there was no generational causes there was no no family ties there was no whatever genesis chapter 1 adam did not come with any generational cause he didn't come with any limitation yet he still succeeded and he still failed so if you are blaming the devil for all your problems you will be learning tonight that your orientation is wrong that in itself is a limiting belief system are we together poor or limiting beliefs many people have very poor beliefs i'll give you an instance there are people today who believe that their success is tied at the hand of one uncle or one father or one mother and would not take responsibility over their lives we continue to pray that god helps our government and all who are in power to keep doing the best that they do to make this nation better but there are many young people who just fold their arms and then just cheaply blame any other thing and any other person aside themselves there are people it doesn't matter who comes they will never rise because intrinsically they are defeated from their mind i taught you in koinonia here that everything in destiny is built twice it is first built in your mind before it is built physically if you build anything once you will lose it the building that comes in your mind is more stable and superior to the one that is physical because if that one is destroyed and the one in your mind is not destroyed you will rebuild it again there are people who lost money they only lost physical money in their minds they were still wealthy they got back their wealth with time are we together now you must cry for a very superior mindset how about the popular african proverb one day go better <laughs> no i've taught you that time does not change anything waiting for time to change things is a total waste of time 
you invest in time and you command your own possibility by engaging the world through obedience just sitting down idly and saying one day you will see you are laughing at me today tomorrow you will see that statement is only right if you are doing something if you fold your arms and just allow life to be you will grow old having that same experience recycled are we together Man. so you must make up your mind that everything wrong with my belief system that is in partnership with satan i have taught you in this house and let me repeat it again that your mindset is your contribution to your failure or to your success if you didn't write it the last time now write that your mindset your belief system is the contribution you bring to your failure or your success if you fail in life even if it is a demonic thing your your mindset partnered with those spirits to have brought that that woe to a reality in your life your mindset is your contribution to your failure or to your success in life anyone here who is a victim of negative programming poor or destructive thinking that is keeping you limited keeping you unspiritual keeping you poor keeping you lazy in the name of jesus the son of the living god here at this miracle service tonight may your deliverance begin i said may your deliverance begin spirituality is a mindset spiritual laziness is a mindset carnality is a mindset poverty is a mindset prosperity is a mindset leadership is a mindset a beggarly life is a mindset mediocrity is a mindset giving up is a mindset endurance is a mindset consistency is a mindset number three what is the third reason why many people are stunted stagnated limited and even frustrated in life in addition to lack of goals and defined expectations in addition to a wrong limiting belief system number three and i want to stay a bit here lack of value and resourcefulness lack of value and resourcefulness lack of value and resourcefulness hmm. you are as relevant to anyone as the value you bring to them you are as relevant to anyone as the value you bring to them you are as relevant not in life to anyone as the value you bring to them let me tell you sincerely believers and i want you to listen to me especially because of the reality of the times that we live in economically and otherwise our world today runs on a value reward system value dash reward system our world today does not run on sentiments it runs on a value reward system say that after me please value reward system one more time value reward system that's how our world runs today so if there is no reward coming to you what you need to check is your value and your resourcefulness you are as relevant to anyone as the value that you bring to them listen as a believer you must seek to be valuable to everyone because we have a mandate to reach people as a believer you must seek to be valuable to everyone but from a reward standpoint you must focus on being valuable to those who need you and have the capacity to reward you let me take that again as a believer because we have a mandate to reach all nations at least with the gospel i hope you know what value is value simply means your contribution the solutions that you provide for people the level of your usefulness to an individual a nation an organization is a measure of your value the measure of your usefulness to a person is your value to that person now let me give you an instance let's say a husband and a wife a husband can talk to his wife so nicely and say you are the best woman in the world you are a wonderful woman 
I thank God for the gift of you. She is valuable to him. And yet his neighbor can hate her and resent her. Are we together now? Because she is not a wife to every man. She is a wife to her husband. So the man is celebrating her based on the value she is bringing to him. And you will be surprised that on one hand, her husband is celebrating her, yet everywhere else people hate her. Because she, if she wants their celebration, she must provide value to them. If the, only, if the value she is providing for her husband is what she wants other people to clap for, she will be wasting her time. Who is learning? There are many, many people whose value you want people to keep clapping for you and to keep rewarding you over value you are not bringing to their lives. Just because you brought a value to your company, it is your company that will reward you. If you want a reward from me, you must bring value to me. To me. Many people say I am valuable. I don't doubt that. But are you valuable to the person who has capacity to reward you? Listen to this and be delivered. There are many people flattering themselves, I am valuable. For instance, I am a graduate. Wonderful. For instance, I have a master's. I have a PhD. I respect your sacrifice. I am valuable because I've been an apprentice under someone. But the question is that if you want rewards from me, are you valuable to me? Are we learning now? So you find a lot of people who have capacity and are frustrated because the people who have the wherewithal to reward them do not need what they are bringing. If I do not need what you are bringing, listen carefully, if I do not need what you are bringing, no matter how valuable you believe you are, with respect to being rewarded from me, you will not be rewarded. Are we together? So for instance, you find a young graduate angry and saying, can you imagine after spending five years, six years, seven years pro strike, doing a postgraduate, doing whatever it is, I am here now, no job, no situation. I, I understand and I truly sympathize. But you see, those who have the resources may not need what you are carrying, may honestly not even need what you read. Your own assignment now is to reinvent yourself to communicate the value that can be rewarded. Else you will remain angry even though you are supposedly gifted. If you can sing and you come to my house and what I want is total silence with respect to my desire and what I want to reward, no matter how glorious your singing is, you will not be rewarded by me. So there are two ways God helps you. Either you change your value to what I can reward, or God changes your audience to the person who has a recognition for what you carry. And tonight, may God do both for someone. Are we learning? Many believers are not valuable and resourceful to those. Please hear me. Understand this. You may be valuable and resourceful, but are you valuable and resourceful to those who have the capacity to reward you? Hallelujah. Many believers want to be blessed, but they do not take the time to find out who really has the capacity to reward me and what is that person looking for. Are we together? So you can be praying right now, for instance, let me use myself. You're praying and say, oh God, I want Joshua Selman to give me 10 Naira. You see, let me tell you why it's a selfish prayer. Because you are not saying, oh God, grant me the grace. Whatever Joshua Selman can spend 10 Naira for, grant me the grace to provide it. You see that now? And if you provide it once and provide it twice, then you will continue providing it. And for as long as you provide it, you will keep getting my 10 Naira. If you provide for 100 people like me, you will get 100 Naira from us. And for every one of us you provide value for, we have a circle of influence. We can bring that circle to your space too. Are we together now? Many believers are not valuable, I'm telling you. To those who have what it takes to reward them. The first thing is that they dishonor those who have the capacity to reward. If I am thirsty and you bring a plate of food 
I tell you that a plate of food is wonderful. But as far as my need is concerned, what I need is water. Whoever has water will command my attention. Now, is food wrong? No. Are we together? You will have to go and find someone else who is hungry, so hungry, that he wants to eat the swallow or whatever you've prepared. But if you keep following me and say, you must eat this food, you are a wicked man. You must eat this food. And I'm saying, I'm choking. I need water. And then someone somewhere says, look, I have water. My attention will go to the area of my need. Everybody who has the capacity to reward has a need too. Every man's need is his point of contact. Every man's need is his point of contact. I have taught you in this house and let me use the opportunity to press it. Don't harass any wealthy man you know. Trust God for grace that what they are willing to invest their energy, their time and their resources on, that you will be part of those who provide that value to them. That is how to get into their space. There are two ways I taught you to step into the realm of greatness. Number one is through the door of need. The other is through the door of value. If you step into the life of great people through the door of need, you will be a slave when you get there. Because you will be at the mercy of everybody you find there. But when you step into the door of value, even the great will recognize you because you came in through the door of value. So you find a lot of people saying, I know this person, Senator so so and so. I know this man, I know this CEO. In fact, I know them. Look at my picture. Look at my picture. You keep showing the photos of several people. The reason why they don't remember you is because you are not contributing any value to them. Are we learning? This is powerful. Very powerful. As a man of God, you must be able to defend why you think God will bring multitudes to you. No sentiments. It is spiritual, but it is still value. If the people come to sit down, tens of thousands of people and others connect across the globe to listen to you. The question is, what spiritual value are you bringing? If they invest three hours of their time, their destiny, will they live transformed? Will they live saved? Will they live healed? These people have serious concerns in their lives. And if they shelve their businesses, they shelve their trips, they shelve whatever, there are people who have traveled from all over the world. The question is that, what incentive? What are you told them to come? Now they are here. What value are you bringing? If you waste their time, there's no reason why they will come back again. So it is your assignment, therefore, if you really want God to trust you with people, the secret is not to call them. The secret is to stay. Lord, what do these people want? And the Lord will tell you many of them have problems, financial problems, family problems, attacks. And then you say, Lord, the revelation and the anointing to solve this problem, let that be my cry for their sake. Now, God who gave you the grace knows how to direct those who need you. Are we together now? And then when they come, you are to keep that revelation and to keep that fire ever fresh. It was God's servant, Bishop Oedipo, who said God gave him as a formula. He said, feed the people, let the sheep come and find green pasture. Let it be ever fresh. And they come and they lie down in green pasture. There's one thing I know about humans. Nobody leaves what works. Nobody leaves what works. You left iPhone lower version because a higher version came. For as long as that lower version was there, you held on to it. Your first phone was a 3310. You didn't throw it, but you don't know where it is now. Because other versions came. And so if as an individual you remain a 3310, you will be in a world that does not need you. You go to the west, there used to be this play that children play. They say, I pass here. No way. I pass here. No way. I pass here. There are many of you. This is how life has been. You come with arrogance. I pass here. They say, as what? What are you contributing? No way. Till now, you've been hearing no way. May it change this night. I say to you, may it change this night. That God will place grace upon your life. That in one week, you will solve the problem of kings. They will say you are the one we've been looking for. The word of the Lord is powerful. The word of the Lord is mighty. The word of the Lord has strength. The word is a lamp unto my feet and a light to my path. That word has been spoken to us today via God's servant through his word. 
through the word of God, which has come with power and light. The light shines among men, and men and darkness actually could not comprehend that light. Um, because you are a witness, just as Christ has made us witnesses. We believe that this video today has transformed your life. Watching this video today, we believe that you are set for a mighty encounter and God is you do great and mighty thing in your life. If you have subscribed to our channel before, we thank you and we appreciate you by staying tuned to the end of this video. But if you have not subscribed, please do so and subscribe to this um, channels connect see connect and if you have not shared the video please share it to your loved ones so that them too can be blessed just as you are blessed today and if you have not comment you can tell us your intentions in the comment section click on the notification bell so that you can get daily uploads of our video on a daily basis and we believe that god will do wonders in your life in the name of jesus remain blessed in jesus name amen we love and celebrate you Hallelujah.